Hey, Ken, why are we sitting in the dark? We're not in the dark. The stars are here. Melody? Melody Lane, are you here? No, the stars. Dolly Parton's here? No, we're doing paper stars this week. Oh. I thought Dolly was here. Hi, and welcome to Crafts by Two. I'm Melody and Dolly Liss George. And I'm Ken. I'm Dolly Liss. You promised me stars. There are stars. We made them. They are pretty. Dolly's prettier. So we made some 3D stars as a template that you're going to be able to get from our website. Anyone can get the plain star pattern. And then for our Patreons, we made a number of different designs to share. So this is a sampler of all the different patterns we made. We did stripes, dots, vines, stars, and kind of a stained glass panel approach. So if you're a Patreon of ours at $2 or more, you're going to get all these templates, but everybody's going to be able to get the basic plain template from our website. For the Patreon package, we also included this little template that you can cut out to do these little screens behind the cutouts. So that fits right in on the panel. Or you could use it as an additional element by cutting it out in a complementary color and using it right on the face of your design. So this is probably going to work best with a plain star. But as you can see from Ken's mini stars, if you use coordinating papers, you can make a patriotic star. So even though we did kind of a 4th of July theme for this video, because it's almost the 4th of July, you can do a lot of different designs with it, depending upon the paper you use or the different embellishments. And as you saw in our patriotic star, you can either mix and match the patterns or do them all of one type. In case you don't know what Patreon is, it's a way for you to support creators like us. And we have thank you gifts or rewards for different levels that you sponsor us at. Kind of a way of us saying thank you. I said thank you twice, didn't I? We're appreciative. <laughs> so, Ken, why don't you show them how you made the stars? Okay, first I'll show you how I imported into the design space, though you can use these SVG files with any system that can cut SVGs. And for the plain star, we also give you a PDF in the basic package. So even if you don't have a cutter that uses SVGs, you can still print out that template and cut out the pieces yourself. Here we are in design space, and I'm gonna show you how to import and size and prepare the template for the 3D star. In this video, we're assuming that you're comfortable with Cricut Design Space already, so you know how to upload an image and upload a vector file into your library. If you're not familiar with that, we recommend you check out some of the videos from Cricut first. For this demo, I'm gonna use the plain star template but the approach is the same for all of the star templates. With the image inserted into my project, the first thing I want to do is size it. So with the part selected, I'm clicking Edit, and I'm making sure that the proportions are locked, that the lock is not open, because I want them to be sized proportionately. And I recommend adjusting the height when you're working with this. In my example, I've done everything at eight inches because I was trying to fit it on eight and a half by 11 cardstock. And since it's wider than it is taller, I wanted to make sure it was fit, so I did eight.
So now that it's sized appropriately, I need to adjust the score lines. So you can close the edit pane. And on the layers, you want to say ungroup. And then you want to change the red lines into score lines. And it, it should always be the first layer in your layer guides. But if not, look for those red lines. So click on the thumbnail and say score. And when you've changed that over, you'll go up and say select all and then attach. So now the score lines, the extra little cut at the bottom and the base are all attached together. So it's ready to go. It's pretty simple. So you can click on go. And then you can say how many projects you want to make. Since this is a plain star, I just need five of the arms to make one complete star. So I can up this to five, click apply, and then click go to cut. Now if you're one of our Patreons, we also give you an insert that you can use behind the special cut templates, or you can use it as an accent on the outside just to give kind of different colors to your star. So I'm going to show you how to work with that template. So starting with a blank project, Here's the insert, and again, you need to size it to match the size you cut your arms at for the star. So I'm going to go with 8 inches again. So I click Edit, make sure that the proportions are locked, change the height to 8, and press Enter on the keyboard. Now I know this insert is going to be sized to match the size of the star arms that I cut out. But to get it to size right, we put an extra piece in. So what you'll need to do is while the template is selected, click ungroup, then click on the larger black piece and click delete. The reason for that is that the actual piece you want to cut is just a little bit smaller than the arm itself. That way you don't have to worry about it being too tight when you're trying to glue that piece onto the project. So there's just a little bit more to do. For each arm of the star, you need two of these inserts. So with the part selected, I'm clicking Duplicate on the Layers tab, and that gave me another piece. Now, if I went ahead and cut this, Cricut Design Space is just going to line these up next to each other like this, which can kind of waste paper. And when I was doing this, I was trying to fit as many as I could onto 8.5 by 11 paper. So what I did was use the little rotating handle, and as you rotate it around, you'll see that the number changes in the rotate to let you know what degrees you're at. We want to just change this to 180. Oops, I think that might not be 180. Oh, it is. And then drag them over so they're close, not right on top of each other. But you want to get the top and the bottom as close as possible. And then once again, do select all and attach. This way, Cricut is going to treat them as one object when it goes to cut it. So when I click go, I can tell it I want three and click apply and that's just over 11 so that's going to fit on my eight and a half by 11 paper but I'm going to get six cuts out of it. If I left it the other way I'd probably just get three cuts out of it so that would have wasted a lot of paper. So I'm going to go ahead and cut all the pieces out and show you how to put it together. Here are all the pieces cut and laid out. 
There's two red, two white, and one blue. And we went with these colors to try to match our plain paper ones that we cut out of um, some patterned paper. Probably can't see it on the video, but this has white lines, just a little bit of a shade difference. Then blue and red. And the red's not a perfect match color-wise, but tonally they're close and kind of the same with the blue. I also cut out some inserts. There's the kind of white ones to go with the red and the blue. And this is a Coordination's Clear Translucent cardstock that we picked up at Joann's. And I wanted to try something a little different from tissue paper. But the red, to go behind the white pieces, is tissue paper because didn't have any red and I didn't want to mess with inking up that paper or anything like that. And the reason I kind of wanted to try to avoid the tissue paper is in my tests, the glues we had were all kind of wet and didn't really handle the tissue paper well. So I'm going to make the best of it for this one. If you're doing something for a wedding or another event or decoration where white is what you're going for, I do recommend trying to find some kind of vellum or a heavier translucent material to work with. It just makes gluing it easier. And speaking of glue, for this project we tried a bunch of different glues in our samples with the brown that you saw in the opening, and not all the glues worked out well. So the glues that worked out best from our collection was a broad tip glue pen, Bonding Memories from Close to My Heart. This had a nice thick end which goes well for gluing the pieces together. And then for getting in between the detail, gluing on those inserts, the Zig 2-way glue pen worked out well for that. The other things I recommend is having a scoring tool. This is a bone scoring tool that I had from a job <laughs> and it's always worked out really well. It's got a nice smooth finish. And I didn't mention it before, but I cut the red tissue paper using the template on a cutting sheet with an X-Acto knife. So this was one that I cut on the Cricut and then cut the tissue paper by hand because the tissue paper would not cut well on the Cricut. These I did cut on the Cricut and I ended up doing Paper Plus, which didn't quite cut it out. I might try light cardstock next time. And the last thing is when you're scoring, just so you don't accidentally mark up or scuff your paper, I just kept a scrap piece of paper so I can score over that, applying the pressure to get a crisp line but not risk scuffing up my paper. So when you start folding up your materials, you're actually going to construct it in a flat fashion. So I'll show that as I go along, but you want to start on the flap. I found that the easiest. So the small flap, you just want to go slow. Depending upon your card stock, you might have um, some structure issues with the design that you've cut in. It's actually a lot easier when you're using just the plain pieces. I punched out a bunch of those stars at a smaller size with a pattern paper the night before. So just score it slowly, and then when you feel you're at a point you can fold it over. I lay down my scrap paper, and not only does that help with the scuffing concerns, but it also prevents me from accidentally catching the tool in my design while I'm scoring. And just fold that out. You don't have to do it perfectly, but you want to have that folded out.
This last fold on the plain side, I only score it lightly because we're doing this flat construction. I like to line up the pieces before I put that hard score in. So I just give it a soft fold along the score line. Sometimes it helps to get your fingers in underneath. So with that soft fold, you want to bring the small flap to the center. And the reason I'm doing this is I noticed bringing the SVG into DesignScape, it did shift things around just a little. So just to make sure that I've got good crisp lines, I then bring that soft folded one over and line it up right along the score of the flap. It's probably hard to see on the video, but just along the score line of the small flap. And this helps you get a nice crisp point to your star. Plus, you're making sure that everything's lined up because by building it flat like this, you want to make sure that you're able to pop it up again later. So with that down, I just still hold it in place with my fingers, bring in my scrap piece of paper. and smooth that down. If you were doing a plain star, you could jump right on to gluing the flap closed and completing your star shape, but we're going to be putting in the inserts now. And I like to score it before putting the inserts in. Again, I don't know if you can see it on the video. The score lines will help you line everything up. And instead of doing everything all at once and trying to get the two panels in, I found it easier to just work with one panel at a time. So I'm just folding things out to give me some room to work with and then bringing out the glue pen. And you don't have to be perfect getting every little area. You just want to help keep that insert down towards the center around your detail. So I'm just getting some glue in there. If it dries, the two-way is going to be repositionable, but it's not that much of a concern. And then once I'm sure I'm good, I lay down a good line of glue around the outside, trying to work a little bit quicker so it will be wet, so it'll be permanent. And then bring in your insert, make sure you're covering up your details, but it doesn't have to be super perfect. I sized the insert so you had lots of room on the edges. Then just give it a nice burnish with your finger to make sure the glue sets well. And I actually went a little crazy and went off. Um, I'm going to let that dry and being repositionable, I'm probably not going to have any issue with it. But in this case, it is on the flap. So that's really not going to be pressing on anything while I'm working and finishing the piece. So now I'm going to do the other side. And 
bring in the next piece. Make sure I'm covering up the stars. And then burnishing that down. If you do misalign and you didn't cover up any of the details, you might want to be pulling that up and trying again, depending upon what you used. I noticed that this clear translucent material is a little more forgiving as far as not shredding. So you can peel it up and depending upon the glue you used. In one of the demos, I actually just tacked a little piece over one of the details that didn't quite get covered. And the way you're seeing it, people aren't going to notice that you just kind of put a little band-aid over things. If you do have a piece of the material going over the edge that's going to be visible, you might want to take an X-Acto or a scissors and just trim that down. For the interiors, you don't really have to worry if you overlapped a little. The score lines are generally enough for that to work with. I'm going to let these dry before doing that final piece to close up the star piece. So I'm just going to set this one to the side and I'm going to score the folds and glue in the inserts. So I'm going to work on one of the star pieces uh, with the white stripes and again I'm starting with the smaller flap first. And this one's a little bit weaker because of all the stripes. So just take it slow. Doing your initial score. Kind of pinching things. And using my fingernails to help encourage the fold underneath. And if you do accidentally fold off the score line, at least I found with the two different papers I've been working with, it's been pretty forgiving that it may look like you put a bit of a dent in to the details instead of the score line, but once you get the piece done and put together, you don't really notice. And this one, especially with the stripes, because it is a little weaker, I find it helpful to bend that score back. The reason for that is when you have your final piece, you don't want to have the lines buckling in and pulling just because that score is so strong in that one direction. Having worked with this, I really wish the score tool on the Explorer was just a little more aggressive. It's definitely helpful, but I would like a much deeper score from the tool. And from playing around with the settings, doing like cardstock and cardstock plus, I really didn't notice any difference as far as the scoring tool when making changes to the materials. And again, 
Coming to this last piece, I'm doing just a very light score. Because I want to make sure things line up when I fold things over. So folding it in half with the small flap in the center and then bringing things over and getting this edge to line up with that center seam. That one I could feel it was fighting a little underneath the paper, but just bringing my tool back and kind of approaching it from a different angle, I was able to smooth that down without it buckling too much, and that's definitely where the scrap comes in handy. So now I've got my score lines to help guide my gluing, and I'm going to be putting these red inserts onto the white. And again, I want to put a heavy line around the edges, wet at the end. So for these, I found it's okay to just kind of do every other line that's usually enough. If you really want it glued down, you can definitely do every line. But just for the sake of expediting things. I'm doing just the every other line. And I think I might be getting to the end of this glue stick. And working with the tissue paper, uh, it's definitely going to stick once you get it in the glue. So with the tissue paper, you really want to make sure you're lining things up well before you have it touch your glues. And because the tissue paper is so, so thin, I'm using my scrap paper to burnish it down into the glue. Oh, a little too much glue. Don't need to stay. So that's how that one looks. So again, I'm going to set this over to the side to the dry, and I got glue on my scrap paper, so I'm going to grab a new piece, and I'm going to grab another glue pen, and I'm going to pause the camera because I can't count, and I was thinking I have two white, so I need two red, but it's two red per piece. so. Keep that in mind when you're getting all your pieces together.
So now that these are all scored and the inserts are in place, I'm going to set these aside for a moment to let them dry. The inserts have had a chance to dry, so now I'm going to glue the panels together. So just like you were doing the final score, you want to have the flap to the center. And for this part, you really want to make sure you're using a strong glue. You're going to be flexing these, and you want to make sure that the thing doesn't pop apart <laughs> on you while you're working later. You could possibly even use uh, some tape if that is one of the stronger materials you have. You'll just want to play with it and get a feel for what works with the paper and the glues you have on hand. So what I'm doing is getting close to the edge but staying a little bit away from that seam where it's going to be on the face of the star. The reason for that is I don't want the glue to kind of squeeze out and be visible on the final project. So I've got my glue on that. Oh, and again, you really want to make sure you have a nice bead of glue on the tip by the star just so you have a nice shape. So push this down. If you have any glue seeping out, you can take a cloth or a paper towel and get rid of that. So just make sure that you got a good connection. I like to flip it over and just push it down well. Now you want to make sure that it pops apart. You don't want to have it be totally flat because the problem with that is if it dries like that, you might have to wrestle it apart when you're ready to pop the star out because we're going to be having the shapes be like that as we put things together. But for now we want it to lay flat and dry out. So I'm going to leave these with the seam side down, making sure they pop a little, and just set those over to the side. So again, here's one of my pieces, and I'm going to fold it in with the small flap to the center. And this will probably be easier to see instead of the blue on blue. And I'm just getting a good amount of glue on here. And getting a good touch at the top by the point of the star. And still making sure that everything lines up because you don't want it to distort. And making sure it pops so we're not sticking. No glue seeped out the inside. So again, that's how it's going to look on the piece. And you'll notice it's warping a little. So that's what I was talking about, making sure you pop this one seam, this one score, to make sure that it's not distorting. But I'm going to pull this back, make sure I got a good connection, and set that over to dry. So I'm going to go through the other pieces and jump back in when we're ready to start assembling the star. I really like to let those pieces dry so I know that the glue set well. Because like I said, you're going to be flexing things a bit and popping things, um, the shapes out while you work, and you want to make sure that you have a good solid bond with your glue. So my pieces have dried, and I've got a nice 
good bond there with the glue. So you just want to... You have your item drying this way, and you just want to flip it now. So the sides that are going to be together, so the two designs are facing up, and also you have the two small tabs on the same side because the tabs are going to be inserting into the other piece. And that's how you're going to be adhering things. Again, I like to just give things a quick score to help keep things loose and give a crisp edge on the points. And then you just want to fold the smaller flap just to give it some flex. It doesn't have to stay up at this point because we're still going to be building everything flat. So the first one you want to set aside because you're going to be putting the other pieces into this. So this one's all set to start with. Like I said, you just want to have the shorter flaps scored to give them some flex so when you have everything attached, it'll work out. But you're still going to keep building everything flat as you go along. So we're going to be putting this one in like this and gluing it down. And just like the larger flaps, you want to make sure that you've got lots of good coverage at the edges. But don't go right up to the seam of the score, because you want to make sure that you have some space for the glue if it seeps. And then, again, make sure you get really good coverage at the very tip, because you want to make sure you have a good solid bond there. And you're just going to bring it and line things up. You want to make sure that you're close to the seam, but not taking that score line inside. If you have to, you can leave just a little bit out. It doesn't have to be perfectly flushed, but you really want to make sure that the score line stays outside of the other piece so it can bend and flex appropriately and then just give it a flip and make sure your backs lined up then once everything's secure make sure everything's set well and then set it to the side as you prepare the next one Must have been a little extra glue in this one. <laughs> but luckily, the zig when it's dry is repositionable. So, again, just flexing those shorter tabs so they're ready.
and lining it up, making sure that it's not covering the score line. Just giving it a light push so I can check out the back. This one just needs a little more. You'll notice um, some of the designs, there's some overlap. I fixed that in the files that we'll be uploading and sharing with you, so you won't have to worry about the flap showing through the design. But for the sake of getting things done on time for Tuesday, I'm going ahead with the older version right now. The last one can get a little tricky because you want to go over the other piece but still get the tabs inside. I recommend worrying more about the front piece first because the glue you don't want to get all over the place. Ugh, it's sticking to me. <laughs> one did slide around a little much. So there it is flexed up a little, but I really want to let it dry and get a good bond. So this last piece you could glue it I'd recommend using probably like your Zig two-way pen, something smaller that you could get inside, and probably only worry about the top flap just to get that last piece in place. And when you're setting that, you want to make sure that you have things spaced out appropriately so you can kind of give a little push and let the star pop out. Um, but we're going to actually tie this off because we're going to be putting in a lights. So it's actually kind of going to hang like that. And you'll have that. If I was thinking, I probably would have done these in a different order. So it would kind of hang a little bit like that. So you would have the stars and then the flag shape. But I wasn't thinking. So I'm going to let this dry so we have a good solid piece. And if you're doing a plain star, that's how it's going to look. Now I'm ready to thread this closed. I just have kind of a large needle with some thread. And what you want to do is take it in one side, about an inch and a half or so up. and then up the other side about the same distance this would have really been a lot easier if I was using one of those curved needles tab back in.
then you'll be able to hang the item. And if you're doing lights, you could string a piece or two inside and then tie it off. Then you'll have your item ready to hang. And when you plug it in, the lights will come through. And when you plug it in, the lights will come through and light up your lantern. Wow, that was so easy. Even the stuffed cricket could do it. I got my eye on you. We appreciate you giving our videos a thumbs up and sharing them with your friends. And remember, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe now. We're doing a lot more different projects, cards, files. We're sharing lots of things, and we're excited to be bringing it to you all. So, before we go, we got a package from Kara Casey. And I think it's for you, Ken. Cool. Thank you. Opens right up. Wow. So there's a note that says, Attach platform to inside of box and slip in tea light candle. Happy birthday, Ken. From Carolyn Boating Creations. Thanks, Kara. There's the tea light. Attach inside of box. So here's the outside cool foil embossing, and then happy birthday, Ken. Oh, that's cool. Uh-huh. So there you go. Lots of lights and lots of cool decorations. Oh, it even says Ken on the front. Yay! So there you go. Flickering lights. Hey, Ken. What? Happy birthday. Thanks again, everybody, and thank you, Kara. So, until next Tuesday, or probably sooner, we'll see you later, if we can find the light switch. Bye. Bye. <laughs>